A History of British Fishers from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Table of Contents Section 1 Author Section 2 Background Section 2.1 Written Sources Section 2.2 Other Resources Section 3 Format Section 4 Production and Publication Section 4.1 Editions Section 4.2 Other Publications Section 5 Reception Introduction A History of British Fishers is a natural history book by William Yarrell, first serialised in 19 parts from 1835, and then published bound in two volumes in 1836. It is a handbook or field guide systematically describing every type of fish known to occur in the British Isles, with an article for each species. Yarrell was a London bookseller and newsagent, with the time and income to indulge his interest in natural history. He was a prominent member of several natural history societies, and knew most of the leading British naturalists of his day. He was able to draw on his own extensive library and collection of specimens, his wide network of like-minded naturalist friends, and his access to major libraries to garner material for his writings, the most important of which were A History of British Fishers and the 1843 A History of British Birds. A History of British Fishers followed the example of Thomas Berwick's natural history books and its combination of up-to-date scientific data, accurate illustrations, detailed descriptions, and varied anecdotes. The wood engraving illustrations were drawn by Alexander Fussell and engraved by John Thompson. Three editions and their two supplements were published by John Van Voorst's company, based in Patton Oster Row, London. Yarrell died in 1856, and the third edition was produced posthumously. The book was a commercial success and became the standard reference work for a generation of British ichthyologists. Yarrell's name is commemorated in eight species, three of which are fish, and in the lightfish genus Yarella. This introductory section was supplemented by an image of the title page of the first edition. You can find this, and all other images mentioned, on the article's Wikipedia page. Section 1. Author. William Yarrell, 1784 to 1856, was the son of Francis Yarrell and his wife Sarah, née Blaine. William's father and his cousin William Jones were partners as booksellers and newsagents in London. William joined the business in 1803 after leaving school and inherited the company in 1850. Yarrell had free time and income to indulge his hobbies of shooting and fishing and started to show an interest in rare birds, sending some specimens to the engraver and author Thomas Bewick. He became a keen student of natural history and a collector of birds, fish, and other wildlife, and by 1825 he had a substantial collection. He was active in the London Learned Societies and held senior posts in several for many years. He was treasurer of the Linnaean Society from May 1849 until his death in 1856, vice president of the Zoological Society of London from 1839 to 1851, treasurer of the Royal Entomological Society from 1834 to 1852, and was also on the council of the Medico-Botanical Society. He knew many of the leading naturalists of his day, which helped him in the production of his books and articles, notably A History of British Fishers and his 1843 A History of British Birds. This section was supplemented by a photo of William Yarrell, taken in 1855. Section 2. Background. Section 2.1. Written Sources. Interest in natural history was growing rapidly in the early 19th century, and several writers sought to provide definitive lists of species found in Britain, 
with descriptions and other pertinent information. When Yarrell came to tackle the fish, written sources were limited. Edward Donovan's The Natural History of British Fishes, 1802-1808, was the only reasonably recent specialist book, although Thomas Pennant's British Zoology, 1812, and Bewick's A Natural History of British Quadrupeds, 1808, were among other publications that covered some British fish. The most notable foreign sources were the Histoire Naturelle des Poissons, 1828 to 1831, by uh, Baron Georges Cuvier and Achille Valenciennes, which contained descriptions of 5,000 species of fishes, and Marcus Elisa Bloch's beautifully illustrated 12 volume Allgemeine Naturgeschichte der Fischer, uh, 1782. To 1795. The French book was important because Cuvier and Valenciennes had grouped similar species together, providing a logical order to their book. Yarrell had membership of the libraries of the British Museum and the Linnaean Society, and his friends gave him access to college connections and their own private libraries and notebooks. Yarrell personally owned at least 2,000 books, of which 80 were concerned with fish or fishing. The posthumous sale of his books in 1856 raised £1,100. Note, £1,100 is worth £109,400 at 2022 values. This section was supplemented by an illustration of male seahorses, with the caption, Yarrell established that male seahorses carry fertilised eggs in a pouch. Section 2.2. Other resources. Yarrell was a keen fisherman, and his journeys to the English South Coast locations, like Brighton, Weymouth, and Hastings, gave him direct access to fresh specimens. He also frequented fish vendors, particularly in London's important markets, and had a network of fishermen naturalist contacts, eight of whom he named in the preface to the book. Notably, the Cornishman, Jonathan Couch, who provided him with many fish specimens from the southwest of England. Fellow members of the learned societies he belonged to also helped him with specimens. Yarrell had 220 species of fish as preserved specimens in his personal collection, now held in the Natural History Museum. Fish were mostly preserved in spirits of wine, a strong ethanol solution, although whisky was an alternative use in Scotland. As a London-based bookseller and an active member of London's learned societies, Yarrell had contact with many fellow naturalists who could help him with books, illustrations and notes, as well as specimens. He was a lifelong friend of clergyman naturalist Leonard Jennings, and a regular correspondent with the taxidermist, John Gould, Sir William Jardin, the Earl of Derby, Edward Lear, and Charles Darwin. Yarrell's knowledge of avian anatomy helped Leah develop his bird painting skills by teaching him that feather tracts follow the muscle contours, and he in return provided a drawing of a thick-lipped grey mullet for the fish book. Yarrell made significant discoveries of his own, including showing that male seahorses and pipefish carried fertilised eggs in a pouch, and clarifying how many selmo salmon and trout, species occurred in Britain. This section was supplemented by an image of a thick-lipped grey mullet. Section 3. Format Yarrell was a great admirer of Thomas Bewick. He named a new wildfowl species Bewick's swan, after the engraver. Bewick's A History of British Birds, published in two volumes in 1797, and in 1804, had brought him nationwide fame, and since Yarrell owned several editions of Bewick's books, he followed the older man's format for his own fish product. Volume 1 has a preface which also acknowledges the people who helped Yarrell with his project, followed by an introduction discussing the general characteristics of fish, 15 pages in the first edition, and an alphabetical index before the main species accounts start. There was no established taxonomic sequence for arranging fish, so where possible, Yarrell followed Cuvier and Valenciennes, otherwise using anatomical resemblances in features including fins, 
teeth, and head bones to order his species. Each entry started with a wood engraving of the species, followed by its scientific and English names and their synonyms. In the lead section, general characteristics, summarising the key anatomical features. The main text described the fish in more detail. Noted when it was regarded as a British species, mentioned interesting anatomical characteristics, described its habits in terms of gregariousness and water depth, and recorded where it could be found in Britain and Europe. Yarrell also ate many of the fish he described so he could comment on their palatability. A typical example is Yarrell's first entry for the patch. As well as the expected detailed anatomical and geographical information, in the five-page text he notes, start quote, In rivers, the perch prefers the sides of the stream rather than the rapid parts of the current, and feeds indiscriminately upon insects, worms, and small fishes. So remarkable is the perch for its boldness and veracity that in a few days, Mr. Jeffy tells us, they came freely and took worms from his fingers. They are constantly exhibited in the markets of Catholic countries, and, if not sold, are taken back to the ponds from which they were removed in the morning, to be reproduced another day. The flesh of this fish is firm, white, and of good flavour, and is easy of digestion. The perch, though very common, is one of the most beautiful of our freshwater fishes, and, when in good condition, its colours are brilliant and striking. End quote. This section was supplemented by an image from the book. Um, of the first page showing the patch. Section 4. Production and Publication Yarrell's illustrations were wood engravings made using the techniques pioneered by Bewick, in which boxwood blocks were engraved on their ends using a burin, a tool with a v-shaped tip. The new illustrations for the fish book were drawn onto the blocks by Alexander Fussell and cut by John Thompson, both of whom also worked on the later bird book. The most expensive part of producing illustrated books in the 19th century was the hand colouring of printed pages, mainly by young women. By using monochrome illustrations, Yarrell could avoid this outlay and the associated costs of having the illustrations separate from the text and printed on a different grade of paper. The quality of the illustrations in Yarrell's books was very high, because he could afford to employ Thompson and his sons. Thompson Sr. was later to win a Médaille d'Or at the 1855 Paris Exhibition. William Swainson suggested to Yarrell that he should produce separate off-prints of the illustrations and have them coloured for a separate sale as a profitable additional venture, but Yarrell refused. There were practical problems in that the wood engraving blocks were set in the same form as the letterpress for the text and, if separated, the extra printing demand would wear out the wooden blocks, especially without the protection of the surrounding raised metal type. Yarrell also objected on principle to the prints being sold separately. The book was originally published in nine fascicules, each priced at two and sixpence, twelve and a half pence. Note, twelve pound fifty-two at twenty twenty-two values. The last part contained an index. The publisher of Yarrell's books was John Van Voorst, whose business was in Paternoster Row, a street central to the London publishing trade. He began to specialise in natural history publications and was appointed official bookseller to the London Zoological Society in 1837. Van Voorst often visited Yarrell's house and joined him to shoot and fish on estates and streams around London. He was a fellow of the Linnaean Society, and a founding fellow of the Royal Microscopical Society, established in 1839. This section was supplemented by an image of the bones of a perch head, lettered for an identification key. Section 4.1 Editions Three editions and three supplements were published by Van Voorst, 1835-36, two volumes originally published in 19 parts. 226 species described and figured, and 140 vignettes. Volume 1, 408 pages. Volume 2, 472 pages. A 1939 supplement, 
including 27 new species. Volume 1, 48 pages. Volume 2, 78 pages. The 1841 second edition. Two volumes containing 263 species and 500 figures. Volume 1, 464 pages. Volume 2, 628 pages. 1859, posthumous third edition, containing two volumes, edited by explorer and naturalist Sir John Richardson. In this edition, the text was preceded by a memoir of William Yarrell, and a list of his publications. Volume 1, 679 pages. Volume 2, 673 pages. 1860, second supplement to first edition, edited by Sir John Richardson, and also being the first supplement to the second edition. 71 pages. Section 4.2, Other Publications. Yarrell's many other ichthyological works included an 1839 three-page, 30.5 by 44 centimetre, 12 by 17.3 inches, oblong folio, on the growth of salmon in fresh water, with drawings in the text, and six life-sized coloured illustrations of the fish. Chapter 8, Marine Fishes, in the William Henry Harvey's uh, 1854, The Seaside Book, and an article on Eurasian Dace, in the Transactions of the Linnaean Society of London. Section 5. Reception. Publications writing contemporary positive reviews of a history of British fishes included The Athenaeum, The Gentleman's Magazine, Lee Hunt's London Journal, The London Medical Gazette, and The Quarterly Review. The Gentleman's Magazine said, start quote, The task could not have been undertaken by one more competent for it. History and patient observations are enriched by a science of no ordinary kind. We have little hesitation, therefore, in saying that the work before us is, perhaps, the most perfect of its kind, which has yet been published. It is written in a style at once clear and satisfactory, and the illustrations are quite equal, if not superior, to those of Berwick's birds and quadrupeds. Indeed, we have hardly thought it possible that fish could be so perfectly represented by engravings on wood. End quote. The quarterly review saw the book as of wider importance, Near the end of a 35-page review, it states, start quote, This book ought to be largely circulated, not only on account of its scientific merits, although these, as we have in part shown, are great and signal, but because it is popularly written throughout, and therefore likely to excite general attention to a subject which ought to be held as one of primary importance by all those gentlemen of education and property, who happen to be more immediately connected with some of the most extensive and which might be among the most useful and important districts of this empire. End quote. The passage continues with the promotion of sea fish as a means to relieve famine. There was a generally appreciative reception from Yarrow's fellow naturalists. Prudeau Jean Selby, an ornithologist and natural history artist, wrote to Jardine after receiving the first part to say how impressed he was with the beautifully executed woodcuts and the quality of the printing, and later, when he had the complete set, said to the same recipient that it was a very beautiful work, although a few of the fish could have been better illustrated. Jardine himself published an enthusiastic review in his magazine of botany and zoology. A History of British Fishes and the later A History of British Birds were both immediately commercially successful and became standard texts until the end of the 19th century. Van Voorst believed that Yarrell made about £4,000, £400,000 in 2022 figures, from the two books. Yarrell's name is commemorated in eight species, three of which are fish. These are Yarrell's Blenny, um, Kirilophus Ascani, from the European North Atlantic coasts, the giant devil catfish, Bagarius Yarelli, from the rivers of the Indian subcontinent, and Leomonina Yerli, a deep-sea morid cod from Madeira, and the great meteor sea mount of the North Atlantic. The lightfish genus Yerella is also named for him. 
End of article. A comprehensive list of references used in the creation of this article can be found on the article's Wikipedia page. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0. Thank you for listening.